I'd like to call the Teaching and Learning Subcommittee to in order. And with your permission, Mr. Superintendent, we'll turn it right over to uh, Ms. Barrett. Thank you. You can start, Ms. Barrett. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good evening. It's an honor to be here tonight on behalf of the faculty and staff of Point Webster Middle School to present our school improvement plan. Although these past few school years have certainly been challenging, I am proud to say that I continue to work with such a caring and dedicated staff that supports our students and their families. Point Webster is currently comprised of 417 students in grades 5 through 8, including 70 pre-K students. In addition, we are a very diverse school in nature and pride ourselves in that. Usually, I begin my presentation by speaking about last year's goals and how we performed as a school. However, I strongly believe that our test scores are not a reflection of our students' true abilities, but a reflection of the COVID-19 pandemic and its after effects. This year's MCAS scores now give us a baseline to work with. The data is clear that we have several key areas to work on moving forward. Our goal is to provide students the support and confidence needed to be successful. We continue to work on narrowing learning gaps and fighting learning loss. We pride ourselves in providing interventions and supports for our students with the understanding that it will definitely take a bit longer to get our students on track for maximum academic success. This leads me to our school improvement plan goals. Historically, we have built SIP goals based on MCAS scores. But in the last three years, we've shifted to analyzing and utilizing the MAP Benchmark Student Growth Reports. The MAP assessment is given three times a year, fall, winter, and spring. And I believe it gives us a more accurate picture of student growth and progress. This MAP data provides us immediate access to student data. And we don't have to wait months to receive scores like we do with MCAS. We immediately receive individual students' strengths and weaknesses, which helps us inform instruction. This is why we decided to continue with MAP-oriented goals again this year. To give you a brief synopsis of our 21-22 goals, in ELA, on a positive note, we increased our RIT scores in grades 5, 7, and 8 from fall to spring. Our math goal, we increased our RIT scores in all grades. And I'm very proud of our students for meeting the lo this lofty goal in grades five, seven, and eight. In grade five, we increased by 10.3 RIT points. Our science, technology, and engineering goal, we are pleased with our growth. Students in all grades showed improvement in their RIT scores. Grade five students showed an increase by 8.1 RIT points to meet their goal. In addition, we scored at or above the national norm in grades five, seven, and eight. We met our, our social emotional learning goal by implementing three new school-wide initiatives. The first was restorative justice community circles. Second, hosting a grade five homeroom for students with social, emotional, and organizational issues. And third, by implementing a kindness club extended activity program for all students to participate in. We also had an amazing partnership with the Boston Celtics and the Arbella Foundation with our all-star program that we will be participating in again this year. This brings us to this year's goals as a school. Our ELA reading goal is to increase five RIT points from fall to spring in grade five and three RIT points from fall to spring in grades six through eight. You will see in action steps number two, a specific area of focus on key ideas and details in literary and informational text. Based on previous MCAS data and current student performance, action step number four will have specific focus, <coughs> will have a specific focus on the five reading domains. If these are implemented consistently, we anticipate improvement in our students' reading comprehension and written responses. Our second goal, our math goal, 
We are looking to increase by eight RIT points from fall to spring in grade five and five RIT points from fall to spring in grades six through eight. Action steps 10 through 13 indicate some areas we are looking to pay particular attention to, such as implement lessons to better strengthen students' knowledge of fractions and decimal procedures, implement targeted math lessons monthly on math challenge days to assist in preparing students for all types of assessments, including MCAS and MAP, and incorporate more word problems in real world applications in our daily and weekly lessons. Our science, and technology, our science, technology, and engineering goal is to increase in grade five and grades six through eight four RIT points from fall to spring. Our social-emotional learning goal, in particular, Point Webster staff will implement at least three lessons per grade level based on our community needs utilizing the Open Parachute Program. This will be measured through student exit ticket responses from each lesson. The new Open Parachute Program has been a great additional resource for our students. If you look at our timeline on the last page of the School Improvement Plan, you will see that we've already trained our staff and implemented our first lesson for each grade level. The student exit ticket responses from each lesson will be used to drive our monthly community meetings. On pages 26 and 27, you'll see a variety of before and after school programs for our students to participate in this year, and our staff is dedicated to providing these activities based on student interests. In addition, I pride myself in communicating with families. As you can see on page 28, family engagement and communication, we have several school-wide modes of communication that keeps our community informed. For example, our parent weekly newsletters these I do to keep parents informed, but I also put them on our school website. If I remember correctly from last year, a question had come up about school websites, and you will notice that Point Webster's site has been completely updated thanks to the assistance of Kelly Powers and IT. And, in, and this is in addition to all of our in-person school-based events we hold for our families as well. Moving on to the vocal survey, as a result of the responses in both grades five and eight, we've decided to adjust the way we do some things at Point Webster. For example, students want more of a voice. So we opened up our student council to all grades instead of just grade eight. We have four class officers in grade eight, and we now have two representatives in grades five, six, and seven. Sorry, two representatives in each grade, five, six, and seven. In addition, to the, in addition, these representatives will have the opportunities to participate in each grade level's monthly community meetings and assemblies that we hold. Lastly, through these survey results, our staff at Point Webster will, be, will work during principal path staff meetings and professional development in the area of restorative practices through reading and discussing the book Better Than Carrots or Sticks. We do this as a staff, and through the Open Parachute Program, we will, excuse me, we will have the ability to teach lessons and better address school-wide community issues in all grade levels. And now to facilities. <coughs> our new turf field has made such a positive impact on our students, staff, and the community, along with the newly hydro-seeded play area in the front of the school. This was truly an amazing process, and I know I speak on behalf of the school and community when I say how appreciative we are, <clears throat> excuse me, of everyone's efforts in making this safe and beautiful area for our students a true reality. I'm so proud of the grants and donations we received this year. We have many grants totaling $2,200, Adopt a Classroom Quirk Subaru grant for $3,000, the Arabella Foundation donated uh, $2,500, and our Geico Good Sports Grant, which I, I can't say enough about, totaling $20,000 in sporting equipment for our school and our new turf field. Lastly, I would just like the opportunity to say thank you for all your continued support of Point Webster Middle School and the Quincy Point community. Thank you very much. I'll entertain comments or questions from my colleagues. Um, I, did, I had one question. I think it's a couple of things, but um, one of the areas that I think is terribly important to the uh, students 
Play area? Yes. That is, um, yes. We, yes. Yes. They're looking to put a sport court out there. Sorry, that's okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that's already in the that's in the works, yes. right? Um, the as far as I'm looking at the math score, the math scores, and you know maybe this is an area where we need to start looking at um, math interventionists for schools that you know like Point Webster that are struggling in the area of math. Um, so I'm just throwing that out as a comment. That's maybe something that we should be looking at moving forward. Um, that's really the the only thing that I really saw that I think that we should be really looking at. And some of the other things that um, where you feel like you're maybe struggling in your in the school population, um, and I don't know if this is a system wide or it, it, when the schools that maybe are struggling in certain areas and then there's schools that are doing really well, do we at some point in time evaluate what all the schools are doing and do we take like put them together, the principals together, and, and talk about what they're using for strategies and initiatives in their school, and then use the ones that are doing well to model for other schools and try to get some kind of, you know, talk to each other to figure out, well, this is working for us. Um, maybe it's something that would work for you. Is that something that we do? You want me to respond on it? Through system-wide professional development, um, we have those opportunities and do utilize them. And is that helpful? Yes. Yeah, we also look at the population. Mm -hmm. um, the populations are different in all of our schools, and we have some kids who have um, more significant issues in some schools, so we take that into account also when we, when we look at how schools are scoring. I mean, if you have um, high-needs kids, a large percentage of high-needs kids, then that's, gonna, that's going to affect your scores. So then when, we, when we're looking at Point Webster and, and their, um, like, EL students, if that population is, real, is larger than other mm -hmm. schools... Um, we think about also adding support for those students in these schools if they need it at, at yeah. some point. We definitely look at that every year. And then um, in addition, we also we meet with the principals um, pretty much every month. And sometimes we do meetings where we just kind of we need to go over business things, you know, things that are coming up or things that are happening. And maybe not so much during COVID where it was mostly business that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, prior to that, and now we're getting back into that, we are actually, we do principal professional development. So before COVID, we really focused on the idea of visible learning and making sure that, you know, teachers were thinking about can they see the learning happening in their classroom and what strategies do teachers use that have really large effect size, like based on research. And some of the things that people may think actually would have a really large effects effect size on a on a classroom actually don't right you know mm -hmm. and so just really thinking critically about those kinds of things and at that time yes we did have principals who were using different strategies share those strategies um, with the rest of the principal team and so now that we have kind of gotten back to somewhat normal mm -hmm. we are starting that again and we actually did that was how we opened this year was through principal professional development and so that's our fo focus for the rest of the year pretty much like every other time we meet where we will focus on a professional de development session for the principals. Can share, yeah yep okay and great. through our pr principal yep. path meetings our staff our math staff meets on a regular basis as well as all of our 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 um, subject areas um, to kind of go over what's working what's not working uh, different types of interventions and supports that we can provide for our students when, where, how we can do that to uh, give kids a little more confidence. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a question about um, materials, especially in grade five across the city. Do we all use the same things? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not different school to school? Nope. No. And just one question, Ms. Ms. Barron. Transient population. Do we have a lot of kids coming and going? Yes. Um, as of, I believe, today, we've already had 22 new students enter our school, and I think uh, 15 or 16 leave, mm. and it's only November. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, almost December. So what, what's your typical churn ratio number? I think Laura would probably know that. Is that um, the word I'm looking for? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for like for Point Webster and Clifford Marshall, it's typically in the, um, they retain like 85 to 87 percent. So it's significant. I can do that chart. Too. Yeah, I that's, that's that helpful. I haven't done that's that. helpful. So, so see the, what kind of churn people have because that really has a significant impact on whether or not as constantly assessing where kids are. Um, I do think, though, to one to Miss um, Miss Cahill's point, a math interventionist at both Point and Southwest would be a great idea. They have fifth grade students there, and they really could use that help. So I really think that's something we should be looking at. The, the elementary schools all seem to have math interventionists there. They share. There's a the, some the Title One schools have dedicated math interventionists. But the rest share. Yeah, um, it might be like a split week, but um, yeah, we can definitely take a look. Yeah, at that. but I, I think it would be good. And I, I agree. MCAS is a concern, and but I had a question for you. When you set your goals, say in ELA, did you have this year's fall at map data that you set your goals? Mm -hmm. You did. And so, are you confident that a three point increase in map, especially for those grade seven students who were so far behind last year, will be enough? So when I when I meet with the ELA reading staff or the math staff, I let them drive the boat. They're they're in the trenches. So when we look at the data, I want them to speak openly with me about where they think they are, where they think they can get to, and how they can get there. And our staff was very, um, I guess I'd say a little disappointed in in where we were, but um, they don't want to set small goals. They want to continue setting lofty goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relative, and timed. And, and I think they take pride in that. So I, I feel confident that they're going to do their best to get us there. However, we also have our assessment days throughout the school year where we continue to meet and we continue to look at this document and we go through what's working, what's not, do we need to make adjustments. And we will discuss if you know our goal may have been too lofty or not. Um, but I think right now we're we're in a decent place with our goal. I, I don't think it's too lofty. I was I it wasn't implying that, but that's um, so. Thank you for that. But I, I really do think it's important. I know I agree with you. Map data is way better than MCAS data because it's actionable. That's the main reason. But unfortunately, we're looked at because of our MCAS data. So I'm really glad that you're taking a chance of looking at what the strands are in the in the the specific focus point that we need for MCAS on, on the map stuff. So that's going to be, that should help also. Thank and you. another congratulations on the grants. You should be proud of that. It was very good. Really nice to see the quirk in the, the Geico? Geico was Geico. there? Yeah. That's great. Really great. The REACH program, um, you only have a small population in there. What, what was our goal, I thought, 20% of the fifth grade? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't know if anybody got close to that. But um, you have 16%. Do, do people choose not to participate, which is quite possible? No. We haven't, we haven't had anyone do, have refuse this year. Chose no. not to participate. Well, how come we stopped? I thought we were going to have 20% of the kids. Oh, can I? I could be wrong. People also it, moved. Oh, people yeah, moved. Yeah, it, it was 20%. Yeah. I mean, okay. I think that maybe a couple people yeah. moved out, but it de definitely 20% were selected. Okay. We and actually it's, did it's have two not students move. Not a move. very diverse, diverse group. <laughs> it is what it is, right? I don't make that decision. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm also concerned because 58% um, of the kids in the fifth grade, I believe, said they saw a fight in the school in the past three months. That's pretty significant. 58%. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure what those kids consider a fight. I was going to say that as well. Yeah. And, and some of the just people pushing each other in line. It could be an argument. I mean, could it could be, be an argument, argument between So it's not people. really clear on that, but it, it is a concern when you see that kind of number. Mm -hmm. um, and my only other question is a point, and I, this, I should have asked this earlier, it's not this school necessarily, and it's really probably for these guys, but a point two SN, speech and language person and a point two occupational therapist. What kind of caseload do those people have that they're only point two? And that's not for Christine to answer. Oh, I was going to say. You, you guys take too. care of that, right? Yes, we take care of that. Yeah, yeah. So you can answer yeah. that some other time. I didn't yeah. mean to put you on the spot, Christine. It's not. It's just not you, okay? But I just want. I want to just see what's going on there. Mr. Bergoli, anything? Just 
You have 80 kids in a preschool there? Seven. 70. 70? Mm-hmm. And how, how are they housed? How many rooms are they in? Four classrooms. Four classrooms. We have um, two integrated and two CARES classrooms. And the staff is adequate? And the, and the supporting staff? Mm-hmm. And the staff is phenomenal. Unbelievable. Phenomenal, Mr. Rigoli. They're amazing. They're quite a team. They're Truly really talented. Hmm? Talented. Very talented. Ms. Yatro? Um, I think my colleagues asked most of the questions that I had, but um, once again, just in your presentation, um, two things, uh, a couple things. Uh, I love how you reference the use of the vocal program to expand the student council influence and leadership. Initiative. The, um, like it sounds like the turf field is really transformative. It is, um, you know, on so many different levels. Um, so that that that's great. Uh, I understand that you might be the only uh, principal thus far that has run your school improvement plan by the PTO. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do that each year. And how did it go? Well, I hope it went well. <laughs> do were there questions, comments? Um, I allowed for the, I took up most of the meeting, unfortunately, um, but um, I presented it at our last uh, PTO meeting, and we we've done that the last few years, um, also because they're stakeholders in our oh absolutely our plan yeah. I mean, as that was well. So. One of the things that we we talked, maybe we'll bring some clarity to asking all of the principals to uh, pitch their uh, student improvement plan to the PTO before they come to us, so that we can understand that the parents have heard it and have had mm -hmm. some input into it. So. That's great. I also love the fact that you you led with the, you know, one of the things that we asked last year was to make sure the website was up to date and that you uh, you reminded us that we asked that and you you delivered on that. Um, so I have one question. Tell me about the drama program. I understand that you you lost somebody and you might be the only middle school that doesn't have a drama program. Is that are there are you doing plays? Can you do that? Did so, so we did. So we did have um, our our drama facilitator um, actually no longer works for the Quincy Public Schools. However, um, for the second half of the school year, we're looking to do a, a play. We usually don't do one in the first half of the school year, mm -hmm. so we're looking to secure a facilitator for the second half of the school year. So when our extended day activities come out, do you have any concerns that you're going to be able to do that? No. Okay. It's just offering help if we need it. I think we're all right. All right. Does that mean you're going to choreograph this show, <laughs> Mr. Gatro? Exactly. You're going to do set design? <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be the star. <laughs> you good? I'm good. I have just quick, two quick questions. What is, I know I've heard it before, but what are the Humans of Point? What is that program? The Humans of Point Webster? It's, I don't know how to describe it, Wiz Mara, but it's, it's, yes, it is based on that. And uh, our guidance staff does an amazing job working with um, Megan Keough in grade seven. And the students, I don't know if you've, if you've been in our building recently, and I know Mara loves it, but uh, we have student pictures and, and student information that we posted uh, right when you walk in the door to the left, uh, the Humans of Point Webster, where kids get to see and, and hear about some different things that they wouldn't normally I don't know how to describe it. Uh, yeah, the so best way to describe it, Mara, you might need to help me on that. Sure. So it's um, it's based on a photographer who went around New York City. I don't know if you've ever seen that, the Humans of New York. Um, and people tell their stories. And so we thought it was a really great way to do diversity, equity, inclusion, so kids could talk about where they come from, what their family traditions are, maybe something no one would expect from them, um, their immigration stories just a way to build community for kids to know one another on a different level. And so a, a number of the middle schools have done that. It's really great. Sounds great. And the first day it went up, the kids were like, I had to, I had to tell them they had to go to class because they were just standing <laughs> in front of it after they were coming in from recess. And they're like, I remember I took that picture. And oh my gosh, look at this one over here. And they, and they sit there and they stand in front of the board and they read all about their, their classmates. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Very nice. And uh, thanks to Colleen Connerty and, and Meg Keough, they did a really nice job with that. Thank you very much. I'll entertain the motion to accept. So moved. Seconded by Mrs. Cahill. You are all set. On the line. Thank, Thank you. Christine. You are all set. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you.
evening, Mr. Rahern and Ms. Patch. So thank you very much for joining us. How's everything? Thank you so much for having us today. And you can Pleasure. start right away, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, to the members of the Quincy School Committee, uh, let me begin by thanking you for this opportunity to present our 2022-2023 Clifford Marshall School Improvement Plan. I'm joined this evening by our assistant principal, Ms. Heather Patch. Uh, it's my honor to be serving in my 13th year as a principal of the Clifford Marshall. I don't know where that time went. Uh, working alongside a dedicated and caring staff uh, to support the personal and students and serve our families of the Quincy Point community. This evening, I look forward to sharing with you our reflections on our progress from last year as well as our considerations for next steps looking ahead. I think by far and away, however, throughout our, this document, our plan, our work at the school, you will see a continued focus on the relationship building with students and families. This year, we have welcomed all the, over 50 new students since the year has commenced, averaging approximately one new student a day since September 8th. As we work to build these connections with families, families come to learn that we are here to support them in any way that we can. As we reflect on the prior school year and look ahead, our focus this year will be to work to implement and formalize two new curriculums, one in mathematics and one in language arts, while crafting a plan that incorporates our prior successes and also focuses on our areas of need. What we noted throughout the data, however, are also promising signs of growth. Looking at MCAS data at the Marshall showed areas of strength relative to the state data in most grade clusters and domains as detailed in our school improvement plan. We were happy to note 70% of our EL students making needed progress towards proficiency on last year's access assessment, which represents an increase from the prior year. We also noted areas of significant growth on MAP assessment in grades three and four, as well as our DIVLS assessment for students in kindergarten and grade two. The growth of our students is strong, and we continue to support to uh, work to identify gaps in their learning of all students and support with appropriate interventions as needed. For an academic standpoint, understanding where our students are is always the first step to complete formative benchmark and observational assessments in the fall and rely on summative data from our prior spring assessments to assist us in identifying areas of student need. Mrs. Patch will speak to our first and third goals shortly, but our second and fourth goals, we identified data-driven strategies we felt would be most effective to support student learning growth areas in math and also support the emotional well-being of our students. In mathematics, we are excited to be working with the illustrative mathematics program as we work to fully implement it throughout our school in kindergarten to grade four. Along with tailoring our classes to meet the needs of our individual student learners through a guided math model, the IM program will see an increase in the use of math talks in the classroom. Math Talks will allow for students to hear and see a variety of thinking patterns and solutions, as well as reinforce a student's ability to justify their response with sound reasoning. We are also working to increase the use of manipulatives at all levels in our school, which allows for students to literally see and work out math concepts while reinforcing number sense at all levels. We will continue to use map data to measure the impact of our work, as this goal provides us with the best data to measure our impact in real time. To our fourth goal, we continue to focus on the emotional well-being of our students while establishing routines and appropriate behavioral supports as needed. This includes the continued use of our community circles in our classrooms, supported by the implementation of our open parachute program. All of this work is supplemented already by our strong PBIS model, which is currently in place at the Marshall School. Open Parachute allows for the launch of specific grade level topics with our guidance staff and then for classroom staff to follow up with additional lessons related to the topic. We chose a favorability rating as our metric for the goal based on the data from our vocal survey as it, measure, as it is the best measure of social and emotional learning that we currently have to measure our SEL impact. Communication is also key to our success as we continue our practice of sending home weekly newsletters to our families highlighting important school events. What has been an incredible resource is a continued improvement around translation capabilities. As I previously noted, we have over 40 languages currently spoken at the Clifford Marshall School, and the use of our school messenger system, as well as our ITC phone system and family liaisons, communication with our families has never been better. This has been an area that we have long sought consistent solutions for, and all of these resources are a wonderful step forward for us. We are excited to continue our robust extended day program, which is servicing over 230 students in grades two to four in the fall sessions. Through a blend of academic supports and programs, enrichment activities, we're excited to include so many of our students beyond the bell in both mornings and afternoons. As we do every year, we look forward to expanding our Marshall Masters program in the spring session to our kindergarten and grade one students as well. Programs like our Harvest Garden Club, Community Leaders, Kindness Club, Box Fit Kids, and Math Games allow us to tap into student interest beyond our school day in a creative and fun way, offering both an enrichment and remediation support as needed. We also continue to be proud of the connections we forge with our families and involvement they have in our school. 
I'd like to thank our active PTO, who support our school events and initiatives like our family bingo nights, back to school celebrations for our incoming kindergarten students, and fourth grade promotional ceremonies, just to name a few. We are also grateful for the efforts of our involved EDI council, who meet throughout the school year. Their work in supporting our monthly diversity topics allows for our staff and student body as a whole to learn and grow by sharing wonderful resources and monthly themed bulletin boards. Having our families feel welcome, connected, and an equal partner in their child learning only enhances our school, which is why we continue to put a focus on events like our back to school tours, open houses, literacy week celebrations, family dances, and family fun runs, just to name a few of our planned events for the year. Along with providing academic and emotional supports for students, we've also tried to focus on additional areas which have always been crucially important to the success of our school. We are proud to have completed construction of the work from our fourth CPA grant that we've received in my time at Marshall. This work saw the completion of our observational gardens, bike racks, fencing around our lower playground to improve our campus safety, as well as the planting of mature trees on the school grounds. All of these improvements help to beautify the campus and also enhance our students' learning opportunities. We are also excited to be rebuilding our outdoor gardening growing areas with the support of the Holly Hill Farm, which we plan to use for planting during spring season. What you may not read, however, in the plan is a continued commitment we make to offer our families every support we can in and out of the school day. Currently, we have 75% high need student population in our school. Our goal is to ensure that each and every family has what they need to be successful in and out of the classroom. By supporting the distribution of clothing from local partners like Cradles to Crayons and our new pantry program sponsored by our local partners like Stop and Shop, we've been able to help countless families who experience both food insecurity as well as a need for warmer clothing during winter months. Before I turn our presentation over to Mrs. Patch to speak to our second and third goals, I want to close with an important observation. Although the vocal survey represents just our fourth grade, I do feel it's quite representative of our school community as a whole. Statements such as adults at this school treat students with respect and my teacher cares about me as a person receive almost universally positive ratings from our students, which I do feel is quite reflective of the feeling in our building. Clearly our message of caring and compassion resonates with our students and families and again serves as a cornerstone for our work here at the Marshall School. I thank you for the opportunity to continue to serve the students of the Clifford Marshall community and I welcome any questions and feedback that you may have. At this time I'd like to turn it over to Mrs. Patch for a few moments. Good evening, everyone. I'm honored to be here to share with you some of the exciting and hopefully impactful steps that we're taking this year to ensure that all of our students maximize their growth in ELA. As you know, we're excited about this year's implementation of the new Core Knowledge Language Arts Program. This program is founded in the science of reading and builds strong foundational reading skills. Our students are getting explicit, systematic approach to teach reading skills incorporating phonological awareness and phonics. Research also shows that reading comprehension increases when students have background knowledge about a topic. So the CKLA program also provides opportunity to build deep content knowledge. In order to ensure equitable access to this new high quality program, we have made significant adjustments to our schedule. We increased language arts time across all grade levels. Grades K to three receive 120 minutes of ELA instruction and grade four receives 90 minutes. In order to maximize this time, we also created what's called a WIN block. WIN is an acronym for what I need. This time is dedicated to meeting individual student needs. Some students receive instructional support with special education, literacy, or ESL teachers. Other students remain in their classroom and get small group support from their teacher. This provides the teacher an opportunity to meet specific needs, including reteaching and enrichment. The ultimate goal here is to provide all of our students access to this new high quality curriculum while still meeting their individual student needs. We believe that this balance will encourage all students to make significant growth. In order to meet our goal of growth in science, we'll continue to utilize the inquiry-based Elevate Science curriculum in grades three to four, and we'll continue to use the hands-on mystery science program in grades K to two. In addition to these valuable resources, our students will benefit from the significant increase in science content that comes with the implementation of this new CKLA program I just spoke of. Because of the, one of the core philosophies of this program is to build background knowledge, there's a significant amount of science content built into the program. Some examples of the science topics include the five senses, plants, seasons and weather in kindergarten, um, animal classification, light and sound, and astronomy in grade three. 
Last week, if you stopped by Clifford Marshall, you would have seen some of our first grade students dressed in lab coats, sharing their newly acquired and very impressive knowledge about the five systems of the human body. <laughs> it is our belief that this increase of content knowledge will be impactful as our students grow. <coughs> the program is designed to spiral, so students add more advanced content knowledge as the years go on. It's also a tremendous added benefit that the students are engaged in learning about these science topics and excited to share their knowledge. Our goal <coughs> is that this increased content knowledge combined with the hands-on inquiry-based approach to science instruction will result in significant growth for our students. Thank you again for your time tonight and for giving us the opportunity to share our school improvement plan. We welcome your feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Cahill? Um, I just have, well, obviously it, it appears that you're doing some good things based on your report and your presentation, so um, I would say keep doing what you're doing from my perspective. Um, what I do see in the report that, and I think with some of the other schools, is um, in the facilities piece, you know, for cameras and additional lighting and some of, and those are, you know, safety, st safety issues that, you know, I would like to um, kind of push to to Mr. Gutro to make sure that we address some of that in a facilities meeting that we look at, you know, schools like this one and all the other schools that are looking for, I think, a simple solution to, you know, that's not a huge project, but something that we should be looking at to make sure that we have these things taken care of. So do the mayor is doing an assessment of safety across yeah. the district right now, so some of that will be coming through there too would, with the cameras, but maybe we should make sure that those people get a copy of the facility requests that, that include safety. Mm -hmm. they, um, have the they have yes. Okay, so yeah. they, they have those people have to that that will if this is all going to go into facilities, but yes, that's a good point. But I think because even if we're going to have the um, assessment done, which is probably going to be comprehensive and really a big overlook of all the facilities, something like the cameras, which are already in place that just need to be um, fixed or you know repaired or whatever, I think it's something that we should be looking at sooner rather than later. So that's just a, a comment on my part that. Hopefully we can take a look at that moving forward. Um, and then I'm looking at your support staff looks pretty good. Um, it looks like, you know, and based on probably what your successes are in your, in your scores and all that, um, it looks like you have adequate support staff. Is that the case? Do you think that you, I mean, we could always use more. Yeah. But, um, I, you think you're in a good place right now? I'm incredibly grateful for the support. I, I think the challenge always is we, we have, as I mentioned, a, an incredibly upwardly mobile population. And, and so it's constantly moving on us. It's, it's very, I mentioned uh, 50 new students since the start of the school year. And um, that's, that's, um, that's a reality of our numbers. And um, so often as we have those important conversations, it, it represents probably an increase of about 30 students to our overall population from the September 1 numbers. But that it, it should be 550. That also represents a move out as well of students as well. Mm -hmm. So there's that constant in and out. And those are all conversations with staff. Um, a lot of the move-ins that we have mid-year are EL students. Um, uh, we also deal with a lot of students that I, I think Quincy did an incredible job. I try not to speak of it. The, the last several years, the challenges we had, uh, you know, we're, we're coming out the other end of it, but we see the challenges that other districts and sometimes other, other states may have had as children come into us uh, with a lot of movement in. We, we see a lot of kids with a lot of needs. Um, so we have a great support staff. We're so excited about the support, support staff we have. Um, but we're always looking to play catch up with, um, you know, a lot of new students that do move into yeah. us. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just curious about your drop off and pick up. How is that going? Uh, morning and afternoon, you mean? Uh, yeah. We, we try, we aim. Um, uh, we have is a lot of cars on. Is on it tough? Campus. Is it safe? Is, it, do you need help? 13 years, we've, we've been in, in great shape. Um, the, the exiting out to, um, um, I, I know Officer Mahoney, as he's available, exiting out to um, Southern Artery is a challenge in the afternoon specifically, I would say. Hmm. Uh, we dedicate a lot of staff uh, in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, I'm joined by several staff members outside. Mrs. Patch has uh, a lot of our students in the uh, cafeteria when they come in. Um, so our goal is always to make it safe for kids. We have some incredible people doing great things. That exiting out to, to be quite frank, exiting out to the Southern Ar Artery in the afternoon is probably the biggest hmm. challenge. And I don't always know that I have an answer. Mm. I've, I've, I've looked at it. A there's lot. a crossing guard there. Uh, there's we have great crossing guards. So we have at South, at Fifth, and uh, down actually at um, um, Southern Artery, and then also at um, uh, Des Moines Street. So there's a lot of crossing guards. They're great. It's it's keeping the traffic moving that can be a challenge at times. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to congratulate the two of you on uh, operating a great school and getting great results from the kids. So congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Yeah. Santori. Thank you.
Uh, yeah, I had the same thing. Right? The map, the map data, the math map data is outstanding. The ELA is great. I mean, I, I think it's incredible what you've done. But the most important thing to me is the vocal survey, and I want to be in that school. Those kids want to be in that school. Those kids are happy there, and they might just be your fourth graders that are being being. But but they've been in the school, so that's how they feel. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's really it made me feel like I wanted to be in the building again. So it's always nice in that building, but I thought it was just phenomenal. Thank the you vocal for that. data was phenomenal. It really was. Um, facility stuff is going to go into facilities. I have no other questions. Mr. Getro? I mean, I said it last year. You guys are rocking it. You know, you're really doing a great job. The, 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 the plan that you put, the, put together is great. The results are great. The, um, you know, I'm just, every time you say it, you know, 40 languages, 75% high need population, the transitory population that you deal with compared to any other school. It's tough stuff, but you're the dynamic duo. You, you both are doing great, and you're incredibly visible, you know, to, to the parents and to the teachers and, um, and the students, and uh, a lot of school spirit there. So you're doing something right. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Bedoli. I just think looking at the uh, <clears throat> uh, map uh, data for your school and for Point Webster is more important than looking at the MCAS. Uh, particularly with the uh, in and out uh, of, of the student population because it's very very difficult to have any type of continuity in their education um, if you're talking about 50 kids this year what are we talking last year probably and, upwards of o over 100 I think we were at about 120 last yeah. year new so movements. yep it's it's uh, pretty difficult to uh, yeah. maintain any type of like I said continuity in a kids education when they're coming in mid-year, we don't know where they're coming from or what their um, background is and educationally. So, um, I, I, like I said, the map, I think the map is much more reflective of what's going on in the school as opposed to the MCAS. So, um, great job. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Prosky. Thank you. I'm good. I'd like to entertain a motion by Mrs. Cahill to accept, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you both very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for time. all you do, really. Good evening. Good evening, evening Mrs. Sylvia. You have the floor, sir. We ready? We're ready. You ready. Thanks for having me. I just <laughs> <laughs> I just want to start by saying thank you to Mayor Coke, Kevin, and Aaron the leadership team, and this body for all your support as we all work to recover from the challenges of the last few years. You continue to provide guidance and resources that undoubtedly help to keep us moving forward. I am before you to present a school improvement plan that more than ever demonstrates the commitment of our staff as we work to review and refine our teaching and learning from the challenges of these last few years. Our goal is to fully recover with even stronger academic programs and social emotional supports for our students. It is, it is our hope you will see an emphasis on the district's curriculum, social, emotional, and technology priorities embedded in our goals and action steps as we continue to follow the district's lead in our recovery efforts following these last few years. We are proud of this plan as it not only promotes student achievement, language proficiency, student growth, and social emotional support for all our students, but it is also consistent with the district's improve, improvement plan as well as the state's plans for future accountability reporting. I also want to say thank you to the entire Squanum staff for your tireless efforts, compassion, and constant professionalism as we continue to review and refine our teaching practices and programs as part of the recovery process. I am very fortunate to be surrounded by a great team from our custodians, classroom teachers, paraprofessionals, interventionists, lunch matrons, and office staff. Thank you to all of them on so many levels. And of course, thank you to our incredible Squantum students, parents, and guardians. Your support, confidence, trust, and engagement are truly appreciated, as I know we all share common goals to provide our students with safe, engaging, and supportive school programs. We do, however, recognize that we have so much work to do moving forward, but are incredibly proud to share some very strong data in this plan supporting the collective work of our school community during the challenging times of the last few years. 
I should also add that our school community is energized with the news that Squantum School has officially started the new building process as the new building committee met just earlier today and voted to approve a recommendation to hire an OPM firm. This recommendation now moves forward to the MSBA for final approval and we are looking forward to working with this group and their expertise as we really get started on building a new Squantum School. The following is just a few highlights of our plan and the work we are doing all of the time to not only assess the impact of the pandemic, but to support student progress, the social emotional well-being of our students, and our own professional growth. We are, pro we are proud to present you with four strong goals and action steps aligned to the district's improvement plan geared to recovering student learning loss in ELA, math, science, and steps for supporting the social emotional needs of our students. We continue to analyze MAP, amplify MCAS access results, and other assessment data to inform our teaching, professional development, as well as assessing academic loss. We continue to supplement our teaching and student learning with technology upgrades, including the district's one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative for grades three, four, and five, as well as the use of the new Clever application that works to facilitate the use of technology-based academic support programs for all our students. This plan includes a social-emotional goal highlighted by the new Open Parachute Program to help students manage difficult situations at school, home, or in the community. This program is a continuation of our recent school-wide efforts to help students develop the skills to safely resolve issues and manage conflicts during the school day. We are working to implement the, the new illustrative math, IM, and CKLA core knowledge language arts curriculum programs across all our elementary grade levels. We have successfully collaborate, collaborated with and implemented a new math interventionist position this year to work, <clears throat> excuse me, with our students in multiple grade levels. We have successfully, uh, I'm sorry, we continue to provide engaging after school programs focused on making positive connections and supporting students in the classroom. Examples include the box program, photography club, student council, writing workshops, and math support programs. We continue to build on a very popular PBIS program, celebrating and recognizing students' first positive behaviors and making great connections to our monthly character traits with virtual assemblies and awards. We continue to have a site-based DEI team with a mission statement and exciting programs, including the upcoming Squantum Door Challenge celebrating Black History Month and the creation of a student after-school student DEI team, as well as a number of one book, one school lessons connected to the city DEI calendar. We continue to engage families with many forms of communication using newsletters, emails, websites, personal notes, and other platforms, including um, using the, the new district webmaster and social media coordinator to share all the positive things we are doing at the school. We are also looking forward to working with our very supportive PTO to plan engaging family <coughs> events and programs over the course of the school year. These were just a few highlights from our plan and we hope this gives you a sense of all the hard work and pride we have in the Squantum School community. Clearly I am proud to be the principal. <laughs> I love the school community, so thank you. Thank you again for your support and I certainly welcome your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Mr. Santoro? Yeah, um, just want to congratulate you, uh, Mr. Sylvia, and your staff for uh, scoring well above the state average in uh, exceeding expectations. So congratulations to you and all. And I look forward to working with you. Uh, get ready for a lot of meeting time with architects <laughs> and whatever, because uh, you won't be home much in no, the next no. couple of months. <laughs> so congratulations. Uh, thank you. And certainly looking forward to working with you as well, Frank. Yeah. Um, thank you for your presentation, really. It's great. And, um, you know, as like the, the last um, presentation, it seems like you're doing all the right things based on your results, um, your class sizes, your scores, your engagement. And then I also um, think that with all the work that everyone's doing with um, social, emotional um, training and, you know, learning and things like that, um, you can see in the vocal um, survey, you know, that the kids feel like they have teachers who are supporting them. Um, they learn they learn to care about each other's feelings. Um, I learn how to manage my feelings. All these things, we have really high scores. 
And that all comes from, you know, the training that they're getting in school and the exposure they're getting in school. So um, looks like you're doing a great job. Thank and you. I look forward to the new school as well. And that's your last piece of the puzzle, right? Right. So. <laughs> thank you so but, much. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. Your uh, scores, your MAP scores are very, very good. Uh, very impressive to see. But the vocal survey really is touching to see that how 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 safe the kids feel and how included they feel in the building. And that says a lot for your whole staff. So kudos to them and you for leading that. I have a couple of really simple questions. So sure. I know what DEI is, but what is DEIB? Belonging, I believe. <laughs> Belonging. Belonging. Okay. <laughs> and um, what are our class dojos? It's a communication application that uh, teachers use to communicate with parents. Oh, so the teachers use Google Classroom, class dojos, and Aspen? Yes. We have... It's, don't use much Aspen. It fluctuates by grade level, but we, we pride ourselves on, on communication, but um, many teachers use different platforms to communicate with parents. Um, I am very pleased. I think everything looks great here. Mr. Badoli, anything you'd like to add? Uh, I spent 10 years of my career at Squanum, mm -hmm. uh, some, of, uh, some of the best years of my life. And uh, it was a great school then. And uh, obviously, you're carrying on this position. <coughs> It's continued to be a great school, so congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate good it. Work. I'm surrounded by great, great people, great uh, teachers, great community. Just make it unanimous in, in, in our praise um, for the work that you're doing. Uh, quick question. Did you run the um, school improvement plan by the parents, by the PTO or anything like that? Before I have not this okay. year. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you heard us talking to some of the other principals, but we're probably going to ask you to do that before you come sure to thing. us in the future. Yeah, we have a number of parent representatives that, that are part of the process. Yeah. Um, so obviously they're they're aware of it, but but I have not formally done that at a PTO meeting. Okay. We'll, we'll give you a pass this year. We'll, we'll ask collectively <laughs> for all the principals. Now. Sure thing. Thank you. And right. we're not moving anything into the facility subcommittee no. meeting because you're all set. <laughs> no, I tried to go light on that. <laughs> <laughs> Just thank yous for the new building. Motion, <laughs> Motion okay. by Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Ms. Valdesti and Ms. Rowley, please feel free to present. Good evening. It, it gives me great pleasure to be here tonight on behalf of the Montclair School staff, members of the school committee, superintendent, and members of the school, superintendent's leadership team. Thank you for this opportunity to present the school improvement plan this evening and for the opportunity to highlight some of the work that is being done at Montclair School. And thank you for your ongoing support and dedication to our students. Tonight, we have Mrs. Hurley with us for our presentation. She is one of the one of one of the very, very many dedicated staff that I have the pleasure of working with on a daily basis at Montclair School. And because of your support, Mrs. Hurley has joined the administrative team at Montclair School as a full-time assistant this year. And her help and support is invaluable and we're all feeling a change in difference in the school. So thank you for that. Thank you for recognizing the need in our school. Um, Montclair is home to over 430 students who speak roughly 28 different languages. And to date, we've welcomed about 105 new students into our school building. Um, 73 were our new kindergarten students and 32 across other grade levels since the beginning of the school year. Um, so we are a very, very busy place. Um, you know, this loss that needs to be done as students come into the building, welcome them into school, making families feel welcome and part of our school community. So it is a very busy place, and Mrs. Hurley has certainly helped us support our new families as they've come into the school. This year we start, started the school year rejuvenated, knowing that it was going to be for the first time in three years we could return to a more typical way of life while in school. In preparation for the start of the school year, our time wasn't consumed with COVID protocols. Instead, we were able to take the time to reflect on our successes and challenges. We continue to be proud of our biggest success, which is the ability to continue making meaningful connections to our students, families, and staff. To quote Maya Angelou, people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. 
This quote, like last year, could not be more true and relevant for our stakeholders in our school community again this year. While COVID is part of our lives, the pandemic, for the most part, is behind us. We are still working on addressing the lingering effects of the pandemic. These effects include social emotional wellness of our students, student achievement, learning gaps, and learning how to interact socially with each other. A lot of our students and some of our families have some challenges in communicating with us after being remote behind a computer for so long. So just interacting with each other again in those social norms that um, have been lost along the way, we're trying to navigate through again this year. Um, so we knew we had to start this year off with some student-centered activities that all students could be part of and so that we could start addressing the social emotional needs of our students. So we started with um, fifth grade. Um, they started the year off with a trip to the Sheriff's Department in Braintree to take on the ropes course. It helps students with their confidence, communication skills, and problem solving. Even our fifth grade teachers had fun and were flying high up in the course with our students. As students came back from the ropes course, they, could, they couldn't wait to tell us about the things that they had experienced, their teachers up in the trees, showing us videos of their students cheering them on. It was even more exciting to hear about some of our students who are a bit more reserved coming in and telling us how they ran across a wire that was suspended 40 feet up in the air and our students below them cheering each other on. It was just, it was just in, you know, heart, heart, heart wrenching, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. heartwarming to hear. Um, so we started the year off with a trip that helped build relationships um, and we felt that this was something that this group of students particular really needed. Uh, we recently held a fun run at Montclair School. Our goal of organizing the run was to help the PTO raise funds for our school. While we surpassed our goal, an unintended outcome of the run was the excitement and life it brought back into the school. We started planning the run. We thought of ways that we could motivate students to participate. We quickly learned that the rewards that they felt most excited about was the time that they could spend with students. I'm sorry, the students could spend with the teachers and staff. Those were the mo most sought after rewards for our students. After the first week of earning pledges for the run, the kindergarten team won a grade level kickball game refereed by none other than me and Mrs. Hurley. So <laughs> we took 70-ish five-year-olds to Bishop's Field and complete with their referee shirts and whistles and everything else. Thought, you know, between the two of us, we have over 40 years of educational experience that it was gonna be a piece of cake. Well, after they finished tackling each other, you know, <laughs> maybe rolled around in some poison ivy, um, we were able to reorganize them. It was very humbling for us. Um, but when we were leaving that afternoon, one of the fifth graders who was in acute care said to us, that was the best day ever, because mm -hmm. they just got to spend time. Their teachers were out there, our kindergarten parents were out there, obviously we were out there. It was just, it was the time in building those relationships with each other. Um, Mrs. Hurley and I believe that was true until the fun run day came and um, we were overwhelmed by the parent support. Parents came to watch the fun run. For some of our parents, believe it or not, this was their first time coming back to the school. We've had, um, P I'm sorry, we've had PTO meetings, we've had parent-teacher conferences, but there's also been, there's always been a virtual option for parents. So from some of our parents, this was the first time they came back. It was outside, they felt comfortable, and um, it just filled the school with spirit and pride. So it was just amazing. Um, another benefit was students cheering each other on. We had some students that could barely make it to the end, and you would see a group of students go back and just lift them up and cross them over the finish line. So like I said, those are just some of the unintended outcomes of, of the run. Um, the interpersonal connections the staff is making goes beyond the classrooms, and they're just as valuable to us as the academic lessons being taught during the school day. The ropes course and fun run are just two of the many ways Montclair exemplifies people will never forget how you made them feel. Equally important to creating meaningful relationships with students is addressing their academic needs. To help us know better where to meet our students, the site-based assessment team quickly got to work and then eventually presented MCAS and MAP data to the staff. We understand our results may be different this year, they may look a little different than past years, but we thought it was important to know where we are so we know which direction we should be heading. The assessment team did discover that the overall achievement scores in MCAS were lower than usual. However, we were pleased to see that Montclair students scored higher on average than their peers across the state. The team also noted that our math rope growth increased compared to the previous years. Teachers worked in grade level teams to create, share, and refine teaching practices that are aligned to the students' needs 
and these are included in the goal and action step outlined in the step before you. At this time, Mrs. Hurley is going to share some highlights and action steps from our fourth goal, the social emotional goal, which also includes some of our equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives, which have been a nice extension of our PBIS that we've already had in place at Montclair School. So we're in our third year of working with the EDI site-based team at Montclair School. This year we revisited the mission statement and focus of our EDI team, which is to work collaboratively with parents, teachers, and students to create an atmosphere that is welcoming and inclusive to all. Some of the EDI initiatives that I'd like to highlight tonight, uh, first of all, are our EDI surveys. Last year, we spent time with the EDI team creating a survey to be completed by parents and families of students in grades K through five. This year, we rolled the survey out in October, and we were pleased with the results. These are a few parent comments that I'd like to highlight from the survey. One parent said, my kids have had the best experience at Montclair. They have never had any problems with other students or teachers. Everyone gets along and is respectful and kind to each other. I love that they have friends from many different cultural backgrounds, but everyone is seen as equal. Everyone is accepted. I am so thankful my kids go to this great school. And another parent, quote, I think Montclair does a great job of teaching inclusion, diversity, and equity. My kids have learned a lot about different cultures, holidays, and traditions at school. We have always enjoyed the cultural nights that the, that the school has held. It is fun to learn about different cultures and taste their food. A second initiative uh, of the EDI team is community circles and incorporating open parachute into those. So we're continuing to use community circles at Montclair to help make meaningful connections, connections within the classroom. We are currently working on a rollout that merges both the community circles and the open, uh, open parachute. And we're excited for the opportunity to use open parachute to better address the social and emotional wellness of our students. A third initiative is Read Across America for Parents. Once again this year, we are inviting parents and family members to participate in Read Across America. Family members will be able to participate in person or virtually, whichever works best for them. Parents will join our students to read books that reflect their own cultures or a topic that is important to them. Or they can choose from a diverse selection of books that we have to offer at the school, such as My Family, Your Family, Our Families. We look forward to having parents join our classes again this year to share their cultures with our students. And finally, uh, the FLAG project is an um, initiative that we were successful in completing just recently. Thanks to the support of our community partners and through a mini grant award, we were able to create a wall of flags in our gymnasium and cafeteria. The flags represent the 20 different countries where our students were born. Thank you to the maintenance department for painting and repairing the wall for the flags and to our custodian for hanging the flags. This project has helped make our school a more welcoming place for all of our students. In fact, the wall was just completed this morning and we enjoyed taking uh, a look at it this weekend and already uh, had a teacher come into Renee's office and say that the students were pointing up at the wall and finding their flags and pointing them out to their teachers and classmates. So that was exciting. Yeah. And during uh, the lunch um, period today, um, students were very eager to point out their flags of their countries where they were born to their friends. And there's my Jamaica flag. And, mm. you know, it was, it was awesome, you know, to hear students be able to identify um, with something that seems so simple now that we look at it, you mm -hmm. know, but obviously so important for our school. Um, and in closing, we'd like to highlight a few additional initiatives and programs that have had a positive impact on our school community. We are proud of the learning that is happening at Montclair and equally proud of the social and emotional supports we have established. We continue to care for school beyond the bell, beyond the school day, by offering before and after school clubs. Um, last year, we talked a little bit about the gardening club that started during COVID and continued um, last year, and parents came in. And this year, we had to add a third staff member um, to the gardening club because it has taken on so many, um, you know, every part of our school um, schoolyard and areas, you know, being taken over by our students, which is a wonderful thing. And we had a, a CKLA, CKLA rep come into the building and um, she came in and she said, oh my gosh, who did the garden on the corner of um, Belmont and Holbrook Ave? And I said, actually, those are our fourth and fifth grade students. <laughs> so it's just nice to, to see people coming in and recognizing. And it really gives our students a sense of pride um, in their school also. And when they have a sense of pride in their school, um, it just it, it just 
it's something that makes them want to be there and be part of what we do. Um, in addition to that one um, example, um, we also offer box, math and reading clubs, game clubs, puzzle palooza, comic book clubs, chess clubs. We try to offer something that all students would be interested in. And um, if there's something that we don't offer, uh, we are open to hearing what students would like to have happen at Montclair School, which is awesome. Uh, we have a very active student council that is uh, made up of our fourth and fifth grade students who lead community service projects and spirit days. Um, they are elected positions in the school, so they actually have to, there's, you know, some wonderful things that go along with that. You know, we do it during, you know, during voting time. They have, they have a campaign they have to run. Um, and it's done very respectfully. And it's very interesting to hear some of our students' platforms and, you know, and what they stand for. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Um, some of the things that they um, have already done this year is the Unity Day in October to make a stand against bullying, um, flags for veterans. Right now they have started a toy, Toys for Tots drive. Um, we did the canned food drive in, uh, in November, Rock Your Socks Day in March for Down Syndrome Awareness, Seasonal Kindness Projects, and so much more. Um, and it's really helped spread kindness throughout the school and acceptance of others. Um, we're also happy to support um, and be part of the district initiatives at Montclair School. I am, which I know you've already heard about tonight, and CKLA, both our new um, curriculum um, that we have started implementing at the school, the Clever Application, Open Parachute. Um, we've also put the International Translation Company to communicate with families to very good use. That was rolled out last year, and I have to say we use that on a very regular basis, daily basis, would not be an underestimate um, um, for that, so we're very, very grateful because we can communicate to all of our families any language within seconds. So it has been so helpful. Um, and we're excited about participating in GLEAM. And I'm very appreciative to the teacher reps in my building for helping with this initiative. I wouldn't be able to complete that without them. Um, we also have a very ex extremely supportive um, parent group. They provide enrichment opportunities to our students, including magazines, in-house field trips, presenters, community building opportunities, family engagement opportunities for our students. And this year, they have helped us with the uh, purchasing of a sm the S'mores platform, which is what I use weekly to send out our emails with to families. And um, so every Friday, families get an update about what's happening in the school. And the beauty of this program is with a click of a button, it can be translated into any language. Mm. Um, there's, wow. it's, it's very easy. It's mobile friendly. So if you pull it up on your phone, it's just as aesthetically pleasing as if you pull it up on your computer screen. So um, it's been fantastic in communicating with our families. We do recognize there may be some things that are a little bit off because it does use Google Translate to translate. Um, but, you know, there are things that happen in a school and we need to be able to send something out pretty instantly and we may not have that week turnaround time um, to get a document translated. So, um, and that was one of the things we talked to the PTO about and they said, absolutely, whatever you need. Um, so just another example of how they're just so supportive of anything um, that we want to do at school. And um, I want to close by thanking our dedicated teachers and professionals who care about educating the whole child and understand that our students are so much more than just a score on MAP or MCAS. Our guidance staff, student support team members, school nurse, cafeteria staff, custodians, office staff, paraprofessionals, and everyone in between, we continue to be humbled and appreciative of their dedication and generosity to our students and families and to each other. And thank you to the mayor, school committee, superintendent, and SLT for your continued support. We are very fortunate to be surrounded by community members who care so greatly for our students. We thank you for your time and welcome any questions and feedback. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is Kay um, We're fortunate to have you. Oh, thank you. You know, so, you know, you have a community that supports you, but you support your good work. And, and this is great. Um, and I did have one question. Mm -hmm. Is there an Italian flag in the um, well, cafeteria? Well, no, and I can tell you why. Because <laughs> No Italians. No, we, well, no, we do have some Italians, but we, we did the flags by the countries the students were born. So that's where we figured we would start with. And then at the end of the school year, we'll reevaluate and see if we need to extend that. But we thought it was um, a good place to start. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah. All right. That but was we my probably only did have a door. Last year, we did, um, <laughs> we did um, celebrations throughout the world. So we looked at all of the different countries that our students represented. And so we did have 
An Italian An Italian book. Yeah. Okay, good. Absolutely. <laughs> if we do that again, we'll make sure we have one. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You're, you're doing great I work. Just get an Italian flag. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. In 1954, I entered the kindergarten at Montclair School, <laughs> and, it's and never it was been a very same. warm and welcoming place, and I'm still friends with many of those same people. That's awesome. And I want to, I'm very happy to say that the children walking in in 2022 mm -hmm. are walking into a very nurturing and warm uh, environment. <clears throat> For that, I thank you. But I do want to tell you that when we did the flags at Quincy High School, I think there's 80 some odd flags there through our survey. The mayor walked into the building when they were all hung and said they all had to come down. Uh -oh. And the reason was mm -hmm. the United States flag wasn't bigger and higher than all the others. It's so bigger. before it's, the mayor gets there, make it's sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. they're coming down. I, I, I might have checked with uh, Mr. Tag before we started. Yeah. 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 But uh, I do want to congratulate you both and your staff for um, having so many diverse and uh, new students to this country uh, scoring above the state average and uh, exceeding expectations in all your scores. So congratulations to you all. Thank you. I, I just want to reiterate that. I think you're doing a tremendous job. All three of my kids went to Montclair and have wonderful experiences mm -hmm. there. Um, I think your scores are great. Your map data was very, very good, and your vocal survey is very, very good. You can tell that the kids want to be there and feel loved. Um, you have great extended day offerings, really great extended day offerings. I'm really glad to see you put another person in the garden club because I was at one of those events last year and it was a lot of kids, <laughs> a lot of kids with not that many teachers. I know you had to come out and help at some point in time. So it was um, a lot of kids. Yeah. Up I have to say, not only I should have also said that we have three <laughs> teachers, but and two days. So we've even opened it up an additional day. So it's wow. yeah. Wow. And, and the Garden Club will be happy to support in any way they can again this year. But um, I really, I think, it's, I, I think it's wonderful, the work that you're doing down there. And the diversity of your diversity is mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's phenomenal to have that kind of richness uh, in the building of different cultures and different people. So it's, it's great. And I, I see that 61% um, of your students are low income, too. So that's really significant considering how much money your PTO makes. They're amazing. They Absolutely are amazing. amazing. Yeah. They are amazing. Yeah. Uh, so just congratulations to them and all of your staff and your, um, and your, 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 the two of you. Thank you. Yeah, through you to the superintendent. Um, did, was Montclair one of the buildings that had new windows yes. several years ago? Yes. Well, it concerns me that uh, there are uh, the windows in need of repair, mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering why. They, sorry, can I jump in? So Mont, Montclair was actually the first school that had their windows done. It was not done through the MSBA. Um, it actually was done, I want to say, 2011. I'd say it's about 10 years. Yeah, about, it's about, about, about 10, 10 years. years ago. And so, um, yeah, so, there, so there's been some issue with water incursion, and Mrs. Melvesti has put in work orders mm -hmm. to request that those issues you know, be addressed. We're working with the commission to deal with that, but windows should not um, fail. fail within 10 years. No, I agree. And um, regarding water damage in the, in the closet uh, and uh, rotting walls, I'm, I'm concerned about um, mold, and I'm wondering if we can expedite um, the repairs to those areas. We're in constant communication with Commissioner Hines, so he is um, he is aware of it and making efforts to fix it as soon as possible. And that will all be moved into the facility subcommittee meeting so we can hopefully prioritize what we want done um, before we send it on to Mr. Yeah, I think, I think those who should be. Mr. Getro, sure. anything to add? N really nothing. I mean, exceptional presentation. All, all the questions that I had, my colleagues asked, so keep up the good work. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll entertain a moment to by Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor, aye. aye. We accept your plan. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Out. Thank you. And just uh, before we leave, I just would like to comment uh, in general to the to the group that the class size is I mean, phenomenal. If you, if you compare this to some other districts, the class sizes in our elementary schools is phenomenal. It really is. So thank you to everybody who makes sure that happens. Thank you. We just say it should happen. We don't. <laughs> They do the work. 
And I have a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. So moved. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night.